Hi, everybody. Well, video is a little bit different than what I originally planned on uh, doing. Uh, I'm still doing the giveaway that I was planning. Uh, but there's a few other things I'm going to discuss before I show the item and, and, and get to the giveaway. The first thing I want to discuss is if you're in the Midwest, um, you already know we're dealing with uh, very unusual, very extreme cold temperatures. And I'm uh, with a group of guys uh, all through the state that volunteer with mechanics and tow truck drivers to help get people that are broke down um, or slid off the road somewhere warm and safe because in weather like this they get extremely busy and it can be uh, hours uh, sometimes 24 hours before they can get to a particular call and our names are on the list now this list don't go out by any law enforcement these are guys that work with the local tow truck companies but you know guys know other guys in other places and other tow truck drivers so we try and keep it you know 20 30 miles of our home but if we can and uh, it's necessary we will try and go farther if it's feasibly possible um, I got a call the tow truck driver is gonna be five six hours before he could get to this particular call uh, this young man slid off the road and the area he was in was a stretch of road. There's two towns, and I'm I'm talking very small towns. There's I wouldn't even call it a town. It's like clusters of homes that uh, in the middle of nowhere that have town names. You know, they've got a post office, but there's no store. There's no gas station there. So you got this town here, this town here, 25 miles in between, and then 10 miles from this town, I-65, literally kind of. Uh, has a viaduct right over the road. A uh, uh, young kid slid off the road and called the tow truck to get him out. He was told it would be five, six hours. Tow truck driver called the local guys to try and get him. They were all busy. And so they called a guy over here in the next county he was busy and he's like hey i know somebody that might be able to get him it's going to take a little bit for him to get there they call me i'm like okay yeah i know where it's at um it's 45 minute hour drive you know best case scenario you know roads are slick you're looking at about an hour and a half two hours before i before i get there and the Tow truck driver told him, look, we're sending somebody to get you. We're going to get you a, to a restaurant, truck stop, warming shelter, uh, somewhere where you're safe. Just, you know, it's going to be a couple hours. Stay put. After about a half hour, 45 minutes, the mind kicks in that he's in danger. He needs to get to someplace warm as he's getting cold. Um, and he was not prepared whatsoever. So he decides to take off walking to the nearest town, which is seven miles from where he slid off the road. And he didn't know that there was absolutely nothing there. He'd have to go another 10 miles to the, uh, where the Vidoc, uh, goes over the bypass, whatever you want to call it, uh, of I-65 goes over the road and there's a gas station, uh, right there that's open 24 hours. So by the time I got to the car, he had left a note saying where he was going. And uh, he made it about three, four miles um, when I picked him up. And uh, yeah, I could tell he was in rough shape. Luckily, you know, he had a, a decent winter coat and gloves. He had the hood up uh, and tied and the wind was at his back. So, you know, he had some, you know, slight frostbite right through here. But you could tell by the way he was walking, he was having bad issues with his feet. I convinced him uh, to let me look at his feet and kind of check him over and, and make sure he's all right. And after looking at his feet, he did not go to a warming shelter or a truck stop. I 
took him to the hospital. Um, his feet were black. Um, his to all his toes on his right foot were black, and a and a big, uh, big blister right on the pad there. Not exactly. I don't know if it's the ball of the foot, but uh, these were my toes right here, and we're talking blister about that big. Uh, he was in bad shape. Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to uh, save his toes or save his foot. Um, it looks pretty grim at this point for him on that. And it wasn't that he was a bad kid. It wasn't that he was stupid or anything. He just didn't think things through. When we get in situations like this, our brain and our bodies react in such a way that we think if we listen to it that it's going to keep us alive and in reality it's not it's going to do more damage to us he was getting cold so his brain was telling him to get some somewhere warm and anxiety was setting in the urge to move and 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 get moving so he did when in reality if he would have stayed in his car it was 15 below zero but it was 45 below zero with the wind chill. He would have been fine in his car. Would he have suffered hypothermia? Yeah. Would he maybe have got some mild frostbite? Probably. But we're talking mild where he wouldn't be uh, looking to the point where he's probably going to lose his toes, if not his whole foot. And the other thing is he was very ill-prepared. Um, he was just wearing tube socks and gym shoes. And anybody that wears gym shoes and has wore gym shoes in the summer and winter both in the heat and cold know in the summertime they trap in heat. In the wintertime that cold gets in and it stays in. It acts like a refrigerator. Uh, so he was not prepared in that case. And my whole point with this is it don't matter if it's summertime, springtime, fall time, winter time. You got to have a little bit in your car because you never know what's going to happen. In all likelihood, 99.9% .9 of the time, if something happens and you break down, you're going to get a tow truck there right away. But there's some situations where that may not happen. You know, summertime, you're going to want to make sure you got a couple quarts of water in your car at all times. Uh, snack bar, energy bar, um, if you're going to have to be walking or you're going to get out of the car because it's broke down, it's not running, you know, air conditioner, you can't run the air conditioner, or whatever, that car becomes a hot box, it's going to be a little bit cooler outside, you know, have sunscreen with you, uh, some kind of hat, boonie hat, whatever, you know, it helps keep the brand helps keep the sun off you some. This is going to make a big difference. And winter time, um, a survival blanket, uh, some water there again, snack bar. Um, that water and snack bar is going to act as a, a comfort. And it's going to help calm you down a little bit, knowing that you have it there. You're sipping on it. You're, you know, you, you've got something to snack on. Survival blanket is going to help keep you warm. Um, and if you don't want a survival blanket, my personal favorite that I carry a couple of, and yeah, they take up a lot more room than a Mylar blanket, is I carry a couple heavy military wool blankets with me. And I personally uh, choose these wool blankets because they're heavy, they're warm, and even if they get wet they're still going to have insulating properties and there's a few other reasons I won't go into right now I'll go into in another video on why I choose the military wool blankets over the survival blankets and I'm not saying that I don't have a couple survival blankets in my car because I do but the military wool blankets are my first choice 
Um, so, folks, always be prepared, even if it's a bare minimum to sustain you for a couple, two, three hours and keep the sun off you or help keep the cold off you, um, you know, help keep the rain off you, whatever, is going to make the difference between life and death. So, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get to the giveaway. Um, I'm giving away a knife. Now, I do carry this particular knife just about every day. It's not a tactical knife or anything like that, but it's a good knife. And it is the old timer trapper with a set of playing cards with some of the more popular old timer knives on it. This is a 7CR17 Mav High Carbon Steel. It's a uh, two-bladed knife, as you can see, in the trapper style um, with some kind of uh, plastic uh, bone mimicking scale. Um, knife is pretty sharp out of the package. It's, it's a good knife. Um, you're not going to put down wood with it or anything, but, uh, you know, for a pocket knife, if you don't want to carry a... Uh, tactical folder you want to go with something more gentlemanly or a small knife to throw in the glove box of the uh, car or truck or you know some some of you people might have uh, rvs you could throw this in the drawer and always have a little pocket knife with you um, i'm not going to say it's too little um, i don't have any uh, blade size on this but i'm going to guess and say a good three uh, three inch blades on them, maybe a little bit more. Uh, pretty sharp right out of the package. Like I said, I've carried this one here, this exact same one, got the cards with it and everything um, for about a year now, and it hasn't let me down. So, now what do you have to do to win this knife? Well, if you already haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Then hit the thumbs up button for me and just drop a comment. Let me know you've seen the video. And in 14 days, I'll use a uh, random generator that goes through the comments and the names and, and it'll randomly uh, pick one and that's who will win this and I'll send it out uh, real quick to the winner. Um, one other stipulation on this is you have to be 18. Um, with that being said, thanks for watching. Keep safe. Um, think ahead, prepare for the worst, and always hope for the best. And I'll see all you guys later. Take care. Bye.